Hello, I'm Stuart Barker, the ISO 27001 Ninja. And in this tutorial, we're going to go through ISO 27001 Clause 10, Improvement. This is the last of the ISO 27001 clauses. So this is the last tutorial video on 27001 itself before I move on to the Annex A controls. How exciting is that? You've got 93 videos to look forward to where I go through each of the Annex A controls but that's for the future. Let's concentrate for today on today. So ISO 27001, clause 10, improvement. There are two sub clauses in here. We're gonna cover all of it. We're gonna do a deep dive. We're gonna show you what it is, show you what's required, show you how to do it. And then we're gonna finish off the ISO 27001 standard itself uh, today in a level of style. So <coughs> ISO 27001, 10.1 continual improvement. We're doing the definition, we're doing the reading first. The organisation shall continually improve the suitability, adequacy and effectiveness of the information security management system. Easy. 10.2, non-conformity and corrective action. When a non-conformity occurs, the organisation shall react to the non-conformity and as applicable, take action to control it and correct it and deal with the consequences. B, it shall evaluate the need for action to eliminate the cause of non-conformity in order that it does not reoccur or occur elsewhere by reviewing the non-conformity, determining the causes of the non-conformity and determining if similar non-conformities exist or could potentially occur. C, implement any action needed. D, review the effectiveness of any corrective action taken and E, make changes to the information security management system if necessary. Corrective action shall be appropriate to the effects of the non-conformities encountered. Documented information shall be available as evidence of the nature of the non-conformity and any subsequent action taken and the results of any corrective action. So that's the definition of the standard. How are we going to go about implementing that? Well, let's take a little bit of a deep dive. First document that I'm going to show you, uh, the first document that you're going to need uh, is the Incident and Corrective Action Log. This is an ISO 27001 template available on the ISO 27001 template store at hightable.io. As always, if you don't want to buy it, you want to create it, pause the video, type it in, clicky clicky, knock yourselves out, right? But you're going to need an Incident and Corrective Action Log. Here is where we're going to record all of the corrective action so that we're documenting that so that we can evidence that and we're going to use it for management. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a record of when it was identified. We're going to have a record of who discovered it. We're going to have a record of what kind of incident it was. Now an incident itself can be a number of things, right? It could be a corrective action. It could be a data breach, it could be an outage, it could be physical security, it could be general if you don't know how to classify it. We're going to have a description of the incident. We're going to have an external reference number if applicable. So an external reference number could be a external uh, help desk ticket. It could be uh, the reference number to uh, an audit report. It could be where this thing has come from so we can tie it back. We're going to record, although we don't have to, whether or not it impacts the confidentiality, integrity, availability of data or all three. You don't have to record that, but we like that. We're going to give it a severity rating where severity is going to be high, medium and low. And within the template, there is guidance on what those mean. But for now, just know that we're going to have a severity. We're going to record the root cause. What caused this to happen? We're going to do our root cause analysis and identify why this thing happened. Then we're going to record what our corrective action was or is. So what is it that we're going to do? What is it that we did do? We're going to have a status of this um, corrective action. So is it open or is it closed? So again, we've got historical records of corrective actions that we've dealt with. We're going to record whether or not it addressed the problem or not. So we can do that in a number of different ways. We can do that by doing an internal audit or a review or a check. But we're also going to check, uh, sorry, we're also going to record who checked it. So who checked that it addressed the problem and what was the date that they did that? When was this closed? When were we happy that this action could be closed and that the problem was addressed? We're also going to record on our corrective action log if it created a risk, right? Corrective actions can create risks. Not everyone does, 
But if it does, we're going to record whether or not it created a risk by whether it, putting whether it's a risk opened or not. And then we're going to put the risk reference so that we can tie it to the risk register and then we can see that it was managed via risk management. So we're going to have that incident and corrective action log. What I provide for you, uh, it's available in other blogs and other videos, but I'm going to go through it here as well, is the continual improvement process. What is the process for managing this? So to give you ultimate success for ISO 27001 uh, certification, when you're implementing your information security management system, your ISMS, what is the continual improvement process? You can see that we've got the standard contents table, but let's go through that. <coughs> Overview. The process of continual improvement is the continual improvement of the suitability, adequacy, and effectiveness of the information security management system. The information security management system is continually improved and enhanced through ad addressing continual improvements and non-conformities with an effective corrective action and management process. You can see here that we're recording the governance framework. We've talked about that cycle before. Um, I'm not going to touch on it in detail. There is another video on the governance framework, but the cycle of oversight, deploying things, checking things, things need updating, getting them reviewed, getting them approved, and then putting them back into the cycle. It's a very dumbed down version of it, but check out the other video on the governance framework. Improvement opportunity is identified. The nonconformity to process or policy is identified by the audit process and by the occurrence of incidents, which in turn can lead to the identification of continual improvements. We've got things that are ongoing. We're continually doing internal audits. We've got the other videos, the other tutorials on planning internal audit, conducting internal audit. Internal audits are happening and they're making sure that things are working in the right way. We also have our, mani uh, our incident management. Incidents are occurring and we're managing our incidents. This is another way that we can identify that there are potential opportunities for improvement, non-conformities, requirements for corrective action. Continual improvements can also be identified by feedback from interested parties. So we've recorded who our interested parties are. People can be providing us feedback and, and helping us to continually improve. Continual improvement management. The information security manager is informed and assesses the continual improvement. Specialist resource is going to be brought in as required and where external specialist help is required, qualified, certified, third party specialist suppliers are engaged. Continual improvement is updated on the incident and corrective action log. We've just seen the incident and corrective action log, but the uh, continual improvement is recorded there and that is used to manage and all those fields that we went through are continually updated as we manage that through the process. Continual improvement is managed through to resolution. As every continual improvement is different, the appropriate resolution is conducted with the appropriate required resources. The incident and corrective action log is update, updated and maintained as required. So we know, you know, there is no one size fits all when it comes to doing your continual improvement. So we're saying we're going to bring in the right people at the right time to help us through that. Continual improvement is reported to the management review team. The incident and corrective action log is reviewed at the management review meeting and it includes those continual improvements. Now you saw in a previous tutorial video, management review, the structured agenda, the things that we go through, and this is one part of that. This therefore provides oversight um, and it allows us to track any outstanding and corrective action. So it's a great record of what happened, when it happened, what was approved, when it was approved, and it gives oversight and it gives that management uh, over the top of that. Root cause. The continual improvement root cause is identified and recorded in the incident and corrective action log. Appropriate action is taken based on the identified root cause and tracked via the management review team. So root cause analysis, when something goes wrong, we want to ask maybe the five whys. You know, we're going into why did it happen? We're trying to understand exactly what went wrong so that we can try and fix it. And then through continual improvement and taking that for approval to the management review team and then managing that, we can make sure that that doesn't happen again. But we need that record of our root cause. Continual improvement may lead to a risk being created and risk management. A continual improvement may highlight a risk. If a risk is uh, highlighted, it is added to the risk register and then the reference of the corrective action 
and continual improvement item as well as any external references such as help desk tickets. This allows us to take our continual improvement which becomes wider than that, it becomes a risk to our organisation and manage it through that structured risk management process. The effectiveness and continual improvement action is reviewed. So the effectiveness of the continual improvement is measured over time based on audit. We're going to continue to do our internal audits. We talked last time when we looked at the uh, audit clause that actually the frequency of audits of certain areas may increase as a result of a continual improvement. If you do a continual improvement, you check it, it's met um, and it's addressed the, you know, the corrective action has addressed the problem, but we may then want to structure and plan an internal audit for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, depending on what that corrective action was, just to keep an eye on it, just to keep checking it and just to keep an oversight of it. We're also going to review it by feedback from interested parties and measurements specific to the individual improvement action that was implemented. So when it comes to ISO 27001 Clause 10 Improvement, we're using that corrective action log, we're following that structured process. The requirement here is to continually improve. The standard acknowledges the fact that everything isn't going to be perfect, things change. Things need to be enhanced, right? So this is all about maintaining and keeping your information security posture going forward, making sure that you have the most effective information security management system stroke ISMS that you can have and that it is always appropriate, always adequate and always effective. My name is Stuart Barker. I am the ISO 27001 Ninja. <laughs> Sadly, that was the last of the ISO 27001 tutorial videos as we come to the end of the ISO 27001 standard. But be sure to stick with me as we now move into videos looking at specific documents, specific templates, specific actions and processes, and more importantly, upcoming videos on the ISO 27001 2022 Annex A controls, control by control. This is where I'm going to try and take away your requirement to pay a consultant a lot of money and show you what needs to be done, what an auditor will look for, what the common mistakes are, how to implement it so that you can have that maximum success when it comes to your ISO 27001 certification. But for now, peace out.